Hello, welcome to the Becky and Boca show. Tonight, I want to ask the question to all you ladies out there. Are any of you afraid that your man is going to be stolen by a younger woman? Even in the back of your mind? I think it's um I think it's something that a lot of people worry about and if you've watched um some of my shows for the last few weeks you've seen that there are women out there that prey upon older wealthier or famous men and will go to great extremes to get those men and that's a little bit scary. So uh I have brought in I call these guys the sex brothers. They <laughs> they have another they have another show on this um on this network, Sex with the Siegel Brothers. I have Larry Siegel and Dr. Richard Siegel. And I'm going to let you guys tell me what your titles are because uh, I get them a little okay. confused. This uh, well, is Larry. I, uh, Larry Siegel. I'm a uh, clinical sexologist and a certified sexuality educator. Okay. And I'm a sex therapist. Okay. And, uh, educator as well. So between the two of you, I hope you're going to be able to answer all of my questions here and... Um, Tell women what they really have to fear about other women going after their men, and uh, <laughs> it's all on you guys. <laughs> well, we're, we're really happy to be back. And, and, Last time we had such a blast. Yeah, oh, uh, that was one of my favorite time, shows. Sure. That's why I invited you back. It was actually a friend of mine, uh, Ivy Sims. She owns Ivy Lee's um, Beauty Lounge along with Lisa. <clears throat> and uh, Ivy said to me, you know, Becky, you got so many negative comments from interviewing that woman. you got to flip this around because... All of your viewers now are scared of women like her, so you have to flip this around and tell them how to avoid these problems. And that's you guys going to do that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Hope so. Sure. Okay, so. Does, doesn't mean they won't get upset with the answers, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, I don't even know where to be, begin here. But my big question is, and my girlfriends and I kind of joke around about this a lot, when you see these younger women going for very older men, you know, 20, 30 years older. Mm hmm my girlfriends say, not one of these young women is actually thinking, I want old man sex. So what is the thought process there? Okay. Well, right. uh, let me, I, I kind of have to just qualify okay. a, a lot of what at least I, I, I have to say. And I, I, it's kind of a standard thing. These kinds of questions, these kinds of issues, the answer initially is it depends. Right. right? There are times where we are looking at some underlying things that are going on, and there are times where it really is a preference. There are a That's lot. That's really a preference. It's really a preference. A now, thirty-five again, year old think, woman want to sleep with a sixty-five year old man? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I in, in, remember in many cases, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the one guy that always comes to mind for me is uh, Sean Connery. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would hear how women talked about him even when he was like in his seventies, and I think really women think he's sexy. You know, guys have always been given that that sort of grace to right. age and mm -hmm. be distinguished. Where you know the women, they'd say would hit the wall. So right. the, the double standard <laughs> right. okay. in Hollywood was part of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's you know we're talking about like kinks and paraphilias. There are guys that there's something called uh, gerontophilia. Right. Where guys really are sexually turned on by 80, 90 year old women. That's a thing. Mm -hmm. it's a thing. Oh wow! First okay. of all, if you can think of it, it's a thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's internet rule number thirty-four. Right. If, if somebody thought of it, there's porn of it, and somebody's doing it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what what makes a, a an attractive young woman decide mm -hmm. that she's going to go after mm -hmm. a guy twice his, her okay. age? Again, I want to also point out there's an inherent bias in the question. Right. Yeah. No, that no. an older guy is not necessarily old no i'm not saying okay. they're old no, but, but, right. but but there is that kind of connotation yeah. that that's a part of that okay like a, a, a 35 year old woman what could she possibly see in a 65 year old guy because he's old right all right and i think that's really the framing yes not it is. that he's yeah. experienced not have that he has uh, um a way of knowing how to treat women better and mm -hmm. that's that's a big factor in a lot of this and i can say from experience, personal sure. experience yeah. mm -hmm. um they, that but the sense of treating women in a particular way okay so I, I think a lot of it could start in high school you know when you think mm -hmm. about it uh, in adolescence girls mature quicker than boys mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. every way except one and the one way that they don't is usually the way boys learn to manipulate and take advantage right so okay. if you have two 15 year olds 15 year old skippy who still thinks you know lighting farts and, and flicking boogers <laughs> is funny 
And if he's going to take a, a girl out on a date, he has to have dad drive in the station wagon, and uh, right? Okay. The 15-year-old mm-hmm. girl thinks uh, he's an idiot and a child. Right. So a 17 or 18-year-old guy is much more attractive because he's a little more sophisticated, okay. probably has a car. Maybe drives, and, right? Uh, so they start right. at a young age looking for mm-hmm. older men. But, but that... that where they don't mature quicker than guys is all the kind of fantasy, love, romance stuff, mm-hmm. and that's where guys learn to, you know, I hate to start so cynically, but part of the script is well, often, it's, it's true. Uh, make your move, take a look for the opportunity. Right. Okay, and, to uh, manipulate women into believing mm-hmm. there's some kind of romance there. That, oh, I'll right. love you forever tonight. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, so, well, so there, I mean, so there really are some legitimate dynamics, right? So, you know, it, it, for a discussion like this, we could have to look at it in a number of different ways. There are yeah. those where it is a healthy, it is a, a, an actually very positive, very sexual, very erotic, very mutual kind of uh, relationship. But then where I think the default tends, uh, tends to go to is you've got a lot of these women with issues. A lot of these yes. women, you know, it's, it's, it's often been asked, I think you, you even asked, is there really such a thing as having daddy issues? And yeah. absolutely, oh, sure yes. Is. And what exactly are those? Well, a lot of it is if, if they're not getting the attention, if they never got the love or the affection from their father, if they were abandoned by their father, this may play out in trying to make up for that oh. by having a relationship and getting the affection and the acceptance from, from an father. older guy. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. But That's see, the problem with those kind of dynamics, why it ends up being unhealthy more often than not, is if he's really kind of in this daddy role and she's more like this needy kid, that's not erotic. Yeah, right. I was going to ask about that. How does right? sex factor into we that? We have a natural, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of normal to not be turned on by, by your mommy dad. or dad. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Right, when couples get into these kinds of fights and dysfunctions, mm-hmm. usually what I see in my sex therapy practice, it's reminding them, even when they have kids, yeah, you're their parents, you're not each other's parents. Mm-hmm. You have to mm-hmm. stay lovers mm-hmm. through... I mean, isn't it ironic that the, the physical manifestation of a couple's love or at least affection for each other is this child? Yes. But then it turns them into mommy and daddy, and they just, they're not Well, on. that's they're, another they're, thing, a question I, I wanted to ask you guys. I might have added it before I, I gave these to you, but um, some of my girlfriends said to ask you about, you know, it's all romantic when you first get married, and then you start having kids, and then romance goes right out the window. Mm-hmm. Is this normal, normal because a man is just supposed to reproduce and get the heck mm-hmm. out of there? Well, no. I mean, not so much for that reason. I okay. think other than there is, you know, the, the repetition factor, there is the familiarity factor. Uh, as people take on the role of parent and partner, it, t- it tends to become less and less erotic. Right, it's no longer right? sexy. Right, it's another- plus <laughs> if a guy is there, and we've talked about this for many years, we've, you know, always had ambivalence about men being yeah. in the delivery room. Some because guys just have oh. no business. Yeah. Some guys have no business right. being in there. And even yeah. guys that are okay with it, there are some <laughs> things you, think you can, can never ruin? unsee. Yeah. Oh, so that can yeah, yeah. ruin their yeah. attraction to their wife. Yeah, it really can. Oh. They see what's always been just the symbol of lustful, sexy mm-hmm. uh, attraction. Has is now. Served, That's served right. It's <laughs> other function. It's other natural yeah. biological function as the birth canal. But that's also not very erotic. Oh, right. interesting. And it's messy. <laughs> and it's it's and and it's hard, you know, the screaming and the. Fa- I mean, there's. Again, anybody terrifying. that's ever seen a birth. So you're saying beautiful is not the first word that comes to mind. Some men might be turned off from that point on. It does mm-hmm. happen to some. Yeah. some oh, it can it can kind of okay. short circuit the uh, the erotic patterns that are there. There's wow. another, you know, if you want to get into some like deep psychological issues uh, there's something freud described called the madonna whore dilemma mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. best illustration is like the tony soprano kind of character mm-hmm. right where you m- meet a woman fall in love get married uh have kids but then she becomes like this uh, virgin madonna figure mm-hmm. again right. oh, put on a pedestal. Up, like okay. magically and so now sex with the wife like there was a great line remember that movie analyze this with robert de niro 
Yeah. So, but with my wife, that's the mouth that kisses my kids goodnight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Exactly. Okay, so, so she's you no my longer question. an erotic Sometimes figure. Sometimes having yes. kids. So they have a gumara in an Is apartment, the, and you know you need yeah. a dirty girl or a fun girl. Right. Right. Okay. And that's right. that's that right. cause that's so that's a time There's not when two I, I wanted to ask you, you know, when men become very vulnerable to people like um like the woman I interviewed. Uh, Is absolutely. That at, when they they start having children. Well, I mean, it depends again, okay. uh, but very yeah. often after that that child that parent uh, line gets crossed in the relationship but it's also about novelty it's also about sure. predictability a new car and familiarity <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah. Uh, a dear friend of ours Esther the Perel, has to end yeah right had you know in a, a book uh, called mating in captivity talks about how the things that people look to achieve in their relationships the things that people strive for safety trust companionship Nesting. predictability all of that kills eroticism. Uh -huh. Kills it. Is there a shelf life for eroticism when someone first meets? Is it a, uh, um, two years, something like that, and then? Well, you know what they used to call the seven-year itch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I it's seven years. I actually read a paper. No, they said that nowadays it's probably it's more like four years yeah. or five okay. years. But mm -hmm. none of that is inevitable. Right. You say normal or typical because that's the the slide. Right. right. But there are ways couple, to prevent that. Uh, yes. Of course. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I think my viewers would like to know what. It, right. <laughs> Uh, here's another ir irony that's driven us crazy for years. Okay. The very process, you know, the thing that makes people obstetric patients yeah. doesn't get talked about through the entire time that they're mm -hmm. obstetric patients. Right. So, with, with their obstetrician okay, guy, right? right? It's right. a very okay. sexless, yeah. neutered kind of thing. It's all focused on the baby. And then mm -hmm. after delivery, what do they typically say? Go home, enjoy your new baby, no sex for six weeks. Mm hmm. What a horrible, horrible thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Why? First of yeah, all, they and don't that's explain. That's your party Maybe lay off intercourse for right. a while if there was an episiotomy, <laughs> but by all means, have plenty of sex. Remember right. that you're lovers. Right. And Reconnect connect. erotically. But, you know, they're focusing on the baby, too. They can't sure. give their right. husband all the attention. And, so and I would think that's a very right. vulnerable time Absolutely. for Absolutely. And there's an element, uh, and again, that is, is supposed to be with that. There right. is a biological aspect of that. When mm -hmm. a woman gives birth, she is now wired to, to be a mother, not a lover. Mm -hmm. At least and for a to, period of time. To bond. Right. right. Mm -hmm. and, and men too. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's, again, one of the things that uh, you know, people like hearing about, and again, for especially new moms, um, there is often the husband or the, the male partner bugging for sex. And because, feeling a little left right, out. Left out, mm -hmm. absolutely. And for even, you know, seeing a woman breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. It's like, I used to do that. Yeah. You know, can <laughs> I have the other? No. <laughs> you know, some, even the baby can sometimes push them away. Um, but. You know, for guys that are, again, starting to get, you know, that horny up, that's starting to really bug, if a woman just has him hold the baby. Especially if the baby's crying. Oh, yeah, especially. Why? But what just, does that do? Well, just like a woman who's breastfeeding, if she hears a baby, even in a distance, even another animal, could be a puppy or a kitten, yeah. she'll start lactating. Okay. Hearing the baby crying will produce this prolactin release, this hormone uh, uh, event that'll okay. cause her to let down her milk. If a guy is holding a baby, his testosterone will drop, his prolactin level really? will increase, vasopressin will increase, he won't be so horny and he's not going to be horny. You're kidding! Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. So all you got to yeah. do is hand the baby so, to So don't get into an argument, don't get into a fight, just, <laughs> just give him the baby. Just hand him the baby. Yeah. But That's very interesting. make a plan, try and get a babysitter, have, yeah. make, make, and, time yeah, make time to for prioritize each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Remember that it's yeah. your lovers. I think more than anything else as a sex therapist, I'm reminding couples that they were lovers. Right. Yeah, that's how they, they got. That's that. how they mm -hmm. got those kids. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But okay. again, there's energy issues. Right. You no, know, right, you're sure. tired. You're mm -hmm. you Absolutely. Know? So that's part of how they have to re-strategize as well. Take the energy factor into account. Okay. Now I want to ask you: in a place like Boca Raton, there's a lot of men driving around fancy cars. Dressed to the nines, fancy yeah. watches, big homes, things like that. <laughs> Are those? Is that it? <laughs> Small penis cars. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all right. You're saying the only re the main reason, but a, a guy would buy a Ferrari is so a woman looks at him, correct? Well, no, they're fun to drive. I mean, okay. there's there's a there's a reality the toy idea. aspect. Toyotas are fun sure. to drive. Uh, not yes. like a Ferrari. <laughs> sure. But, okay, yeah, but there the is that, reason, that element. Okay, so sure. if a woman's husband were to go out and buy a red Ferrari and they've been married uh, 20 years or so, should, should she be she worried? Should she worry? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if worry is the word, 
but she should at least maybe take that as a sign a that sign. something's yes. going on in him. Okay, most so likely, what could the woman do then? Okay, most likely he's having uh, just a very typical midlife crisis, seeing mm -hmm. his youth, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the little gray, little wrinkles. So it's just kind of grasping at some more vitality. And what she can do, what they both can do, is to make sure they're maintaining an erotic marriage. So, that they don't so you're saying if they maintain old. an erotic uh, marriage, the man is immune to the younger woman that comes onto him because she sees that red Ferrari? Uh, immune? Well, uh, no, but it becomes less powerful. Okay. Just vulnerable and immune and stuff like that. You know, we were th talking about this on the drive up today. Uh, always recalls this idea from, it was Bill Moore, Bill Moore. right? Or Chris Rock? Bill Moore. Bill Moore. That men are only as faithful as their options. Right. Well, mm -hmm. when you get a red Ferrari, you have mm -hmm. more options. Right. Yeah. That's, but again, you know. a lot of it is also, too, remember, it, it is, it's more about ego stroking. Uh, it's more yes. about the attention. Yes. It's more about the validation. Yes. If a young woman is hitting on an older guy or, or just giving him attention, that's an ego stroke. That's a valid. You know what? I'm not an old guy. I'm right. not past my prime, prime. Maybe I still have it. Mm -hmm. That's really where the validation and so a lot of these young women that are maybe looking for wealthy men are pretty um, skilled at that, I would assume. Probably. <laughs> they understand and, that. And would probably have a, a good idea or a good sense of who would be sort of vulnerable to their charm, so to speak. Because mm -hmm. I also don't want to um, have a picture painted that men are victims. Yeah. You know, well, a man who is falling for the charms of a younger right, woman, he's not now, a victim. He's making a but choice. But let me tell you this. When I had this woman on... Um, under one of the videos, we got 250 comments. All of them were neg co negative comments against her, calling right. her horrible names for what right. she did. Only one was a negative comment mm -hmm. about the guy, and all it said was, Literally. he sure can pick him. So nobody seemed to right. blame. And most they, of these were comments from her, women, and they blamed was, her. And unfortunately, no, that often the is the way it works. Yeah. That's often yeah, the way it works. Was, I, always I was thinking well, it took two to right. do this. Sure. Right, because so, they're, again, part of the script that we have. And, you know, we hear this played out in so many different ways, even from a young age. There's some message that gets reinforced over and over and over again that sexually men cannot control themselves. Yes. Men are <laughs> that's incapable what it, that's what of, it seems like of with these comments. basically right. making conscious and deliberate right. decisions. If this woman goes and after them, they're going to that's true. Fall. Right. The right. fact that men make poor decisions sometimes <laughs> doesn't mean that they can't help themselves. They're very much helping themselves. <laughs> it's a very deliberate decision. It's a deliberate decision. Yeah. Yes, I think okay. also the unfortunate reality that sex uh, too often is commodified, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which really you could, it's not that much of a stretch to say that's what prostitution is. Well, well yeah. Sure. This yeah. idea oh, that I if I spend money or if I have lots of money, which signals you right. can get some of this, mm -hmm. then sex is well, another Well, that's what commodity. I was wondering. Right. Also, with um, with these older guys, let's say there's a 65-year-old and a 30-year-old woman is coming on to him. Does he understand that it's for, I mean, for what he has that she can get, or does he think she's crazy about him? Larry's answer. Larry? It, it depends. <laughs> it depends. Sometimes, <laughs> yes, guys are naive and really fall for yeah, that kind right. of and play. You see that happen. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. there's real, you know, connection. Real, real, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, when she's 40-something, she's likely going to be taking care of a guy that's well, pushing yeah. 70. She's going to be changing two sets of diapers. <laughs> right. And, and, and the, you really have to think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, yeah, that, that, that is an that issue. That excitement, that lust, that honeymoon phase, that, that, uh, that term limerence, we're crazy. Nobody thinks the, right. the future. The right. future is like next week. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. talking about a health, you know, forming a healthy relationship. I right. know this is going to be because with a thirty-year age difference, a woman could be sixty with a ninety-year-old. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, I apologize how horrible this sounds, but I just really never was able to quite swallow the idea that Anna Nicole Smith really, really loved yes. that <laughs> crypt keeper of a you know he was somewhere between eighty-five and two hundred yes. years old. Yes. Right. Who was pretty non-functional on he, virtually yeah. every yeah. level. Yeah. So and she right, loved right. him, and they had yes. such wonderful sex life, and I was like. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, everybody, see you next Thank week. You so Thank much. you. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. Take care.